go, we're all set. Well, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to the uh, final official press conference for a fight billed as the return of the saint. Now, for most people uh, my age, when I was first contacted by uh, Kala Sauerland uh, in regards to the return of the saint, I thought, wow, George Sanders is coming back and we're going to have the return of the saint. So I see there's by the response, everybody's younger than me. Anyway. But uh, it's, uh, it's indeed uh, a pleasure to see uh, a fighter uh, young enough, and his opponent, of course, uh, young enough that when they first were born, I was uh, announcing Mike Tyson as the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, so that kind of makes you feel like a bit of a geezer, which is my nickname, Team Sour. But uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here, and uh, uh, people like to say things that are flattering to me about, that. well, if you're here, it's a big fight. If I wasn't here, this would still be a big, important fight. So uh, here to tell you more about uh, the people up here at this table, let me introduce to you uh, from Team Sourland, Kala Sour. Um, first of all, um, good afternoon. Um, it's business time now. You know we have the first presser some weeks back now. Um, focused on um, Saturday. Looking forward to an amazing event. Uh, we have a, a close to capacity to, to a capacity crowd. Um, spectacular walk-ins, um, but after that, of course, the main event, and it's all about taking the step, we hope for George, of course, uh, towards the World Championship, um, confirmed this week by the WBC in writing that the winner will be the final, or this is the final eliminator for the challenge or the mandatory position to uh, Anthony Durrell. So uh, everything at stake, you know, from, from our side, from, from Georgia's side, I think, you know, this is, this is a, you know, we're very happy to be in a position so quickly to, to, have, this, to have this chance. I think George has earned that chance as well uh, over his last performances. Um, and, you know, I'll give it to my brother and say a little bit about the preparations around the event. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good to be here. It's uh, nice to finally do a promotion uh, so close to home. I only live three miles up the road, and you know, it's, uh, it's good to be here, roll out of bed, and be at the press conference. Um, uh, regarding preparations, uh, you know, it's um, always tough coming to a new country, learning uh, the way things work. But um, we've got there. We're at the press conference. Going to have a good crowd. Um, I've been watching George train uh, at least once a week, going up to the gym. And I can truly say I've never watched a, a fighter train so hard. Um, you know, he, he, he'd actually, uh, I wish I could send him over to Germany to train some of our boys over there. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, I expect a great fight on Saturday. Um, Mr. Abras, you know, he brings a good challenge, European champion. And, uh, you know, he's, he's what's in the way for George uh, for the world title challenge. Um, so, it's a big night, Mr. Buffer. Uh, Cal, let me give it back to you. I think you have another running order right now. Do you, do you want to uh, speak next? Yeah, I think um, we'll go first, uh, you know, in, out of respect for with the, with the champion, the, the European champion, number three in the world, Christopher Bass. Okay, if I may. Um, first of all, I, you know, when I, when I look at these two fighters, uh, you remember uh, Angelo, the late, great Angelo Dundee and Gil Clancy, two uh, uh, Hall of Fame uh, trainers and managers in the world of boxing used to have a favorite expression where they would say, uh, ah, he's really a cute kid, you know, with the, the Philadelphia accent for Angelo and New York accent for Gil Clancy. And cute, coming from one of those guys, meant that it was a fighter who was uh, clever, a good boxer, somebody that had uh, really good skills and could make you look bad. Um, when I look at these two fighters here, I think their female fans all refer to them uh, as being cute in an entirely different way. They both look like they should be lead singers for a boy band and, and, or, or modeling clothes for uh, you know, designer, designer suits. So uh, let's uh, introduce first the, uh, the reigning and defending European boxing champion in the super middleweight division. His record stands at 22 victories with six KOs. He's recognized as a, as a master boxer, in the words of Clancy and Angelo Dundee, he would be considered 
acute fighter, one who's dangerous and skilled indeed. He comes to us from France. Please welcome, in English, it's known as the iceberg. And in French, I don't know if I can say it right, l'iceberg. Is that close? <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here's the defending champion, Christophe Rivasse. He hasn't too much to say, but he's really looking forward to Saturday and he is ready. Vous voulez peut-être dire quelque chose, Laurent Oui, avec plaisir. Oui, s'il vous plaît. Bah alors, tout d'abord, euh, j'aimerais euh, remercier euh, le peuple anglais et ainsi que Sir Arlande de nous recevoir à Wembley pour ce grand événement. Okay, um, he's very happy to be here. Thanks, Sal, and um, for making this happen, this lovely event, and here in Wembley, which is a, obviously a great venue. Euh, et puis, euh, en espérant que tout se passe bien, en tout cas nous sommes venus ici pour, euh, pour gagner, ça c'est sûr. Christopher euh, ne fera aucun cadeau, ça il faut le savoir. Euh, et je pense que tout se jugera le jour J, c'est-à-dire samedi. Yeah. So, I mean, he's come here. <laughs> He's come here to fight and he's come here to win. He's not going to give any presents away. And he's going to be here and we'll see on Saturday what happens. He's not going to give anything away. You can see clearly you've been not only studying George in the ring, but you've watched the build up to his last fights outside the ring. And I admire the respect you pay George by saying few words because we all know George is razor sharp. <laughs> C'est vrai que vous ne vous dites pas trop trop, mais vous avez déjà vu, vous avez le respect, vous avez vu Georges la fois passée et vous savez que vous, vous lui donnez le respect. Vous ne vous dites pas trop trop de mots, mais vous êtes là et vous êtes prêts pour le ring euh, samedi. Absolutely, that's completely right. They are ready. <laughs> Mr. Tiazo Promoter says, as far as they're concerned, um, George Groves is just one step for them onwards to the world title. <laughs> one step for us too. <laughs> I want to remind everybody, also on the line with this fight tomorrow night, as well as uh, Christopher's uh, uh, EBU title is the vacant WBC silver belt title, very prestigious title, and as Kala mentioned, it is a, a world title eliminator for the WBC uh, World Championship in the super middleweight division. So it, it's a big night for, uh, for both fighters indeed, as well as the boxing fans with those titles on the line. So uh, with that said, uh, let's uh, meet the folks from uh, uh, Team Groves, and uh, let me introduce to you this time, his professional record stands at 19 victories, including 15 KOs, that's a 71% KO record. So we indeed have to uh, rank him as uh, one of the best punchers in the super middleweight division. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the return of the Saint. Here is Saint George Groves. It's, it's great to be back. It really is. Uh, sometimes it don't feel like long, long ago sitting at the top table, but uh, sometimes it does. And, um, I'm really enjoying every moment of it, and I wasn't sure if I was going to. Um, obviously, with the last fight, win, lose, or draw, um, it would have been tough following fight to deal with. Uh, the come down that would obviously follow a historic fight but I took so much from the first fight I learned so much in the build up um, I learned how to manage my affairs inside and outside the ring and right up until the the punch that, that punched me out um, we was in full control so uh, that was a little bit frustrating but we're back to uh, we're back to the drawing board 
to well, thank me, two guys next to me for giving me this opportunity to come back in at this level because this is what I needed. I couldn't come in with an easy fight. I couldn't um, have something that wouldn't stress me or, or make me work hard because there are, if I would have that motivation to, to achieve what my goal is, my goal is to become world champion. And um, it's a perfect fight, European title on the line. It's a belt I've always wanted to fight for, I know. And uh, just as importantly, if not more importantly, uh, win this and become man of the challenger for the WBC. Um, I belong to this level, I certainly belong to this level. Uh, the champion, Anthony Durrell, we've heard the comments from him this week. He's worried, he doesn't think I deserve a chance. And the only reason he's saying that is because he knows I'm going to win this weekend, he doesn't want to fight me. So, we just don't have proof in the pudding yet. You know, we've campaigned well at world class level challenge unsuccessfully for two world titles, but um, we know we've got it in us. Like, and uh, I know I'm capable, and it feels like an inevitability that uh, I will go on and become world champion. Um, we've approached this camp a little bit more ruthlessly uh, compared to the grid. You know, we always want to fight. And uh, and uh, and uh, I'm gonna you know, take people out, but never more so than this. And maybe that's because this fight feels like it's more important than any other fight. Um, certainly can't afford to lose this fight, but um, we'll see a different side to me on Saturday night. Uh, the side that uh, fight fans will enjoy. You know? It's um, it's all action. We mean business and we plan to uh, bring the house down and uh, send out a real message to everyone in the middle of the division that, you know, um, you look at the result of box rec, it's two losses, two, two knockout defeats, but if you want to move the lines, um, I'm here. And uh, it wasn't the arrival I hoped for at Wembley. It would have been a perfect arrival, but um, boxing, uh, especially for me sometimes, doesn't go the way you've always intended. But, it is an inevitability that I'm a world champion. And um, we want to take the quickest route or the easiest route. This is for us the best route. And um, I can't wait to take Rabate out weekend. Um, showing that he's in a level that he can't compete with. And, uh, and then mm -hmm. plow on from there. So uh, I'm going to say I thank you guys for the opportunity. And uh, I thank Sky for backing me. Um, I think obviously I think that they believe I'm going to go on to do good things and become world champion and be involved in some, some major mental fights. And uh, yeah, so I hope you all tune in. Everyone who's already there, um, hope you enjoy. I'm sure you will. And uh, I thank you all for tuning in. Okay. And uh, can we have a few words from, uh, from uh, Team Groves and the trainer this time? Don't really say much, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you're all cool. See you Saturday. You got your best Frank Sinatra look, by the way. What was that? What did you say? What did you say? Yes, I saw that Christopher is very dangerous and that in the current shape, he can have any other kind of super moyen of the planet that he wants. Okay, so he's in such amazing shape. He's trained so hard, Christopher, that it doesn't matter who's in the ring with him, whatever level, any super middleweight on the planet, he's going to beat them in the shape that he's in now. We've got the official weigh in uh, tomorrow. What time? <coughs> yeah, we have the official weigh in. That's all respected. Um, Glad to see some confidence. We think we'll be drinking English ale afterwards. You think you'll be drinking French red wine? We'll, we'll see. Um, at the end of the day, we'd like to just a couple of things around the event. Um, we're, you know, we're, we've uh, been working together. Uh, Matchroom has provided the undercard. We're uh, very grateful for it. And with the city and Kelly Affi, boxing on the undercard will be available in, uh, in a few minutes uh, for one on ones. Uh, tomorrow, one o'clock is the. Uh, is the uh, press conference, is the uh, weigh-in at the uh, Wembley Stadium, Wembley Suite. Doors open Saturday 5.30, first bell 6 o'clock. We expect George to walk uh, around 9.45. That's not a promoter 9.45, that is a real 9.45. 
Um, so um, that's uh, the timings. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope there are any questions now. How many total fights do we have? If I may ask, nine, right? Yeah, a total of nine fights scheduled right now. Some really, really good uh, fights on the undercard. Uh, and fights that would be uh, uh, TV main events uh, at many other times. And uh, I, I think everyone can expect uh, a good crowd. What's what's capacity in the arena? Uh, we've got seven and a half thousand. Yeah, we've, we've got that. Uh, we'll be, we'll be at or around capacity. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be loud, and uh, they'll be loud and proud in support for the young man from Hammersmith for sure. And uh, I, I think everybody will have a good time. Is there, I, I heard there's going to be a fantastic entrance. Is that, uh, is that true? Am I hearing that correct? Um, well, let me go to the States. Everybody tries to outdo each other with it's, the uh, entrance, so. it's, uh, it's certainly a very British entrance. Yes. All right. So, uh, yeah, do we have any questions? Yeah, George, um, you made reference to Anthony DeVoe there. I'm sure you've seen his comments from last week. What you make of those? Yeah, I mean, first and foremost, certainly not going to take my house on you know, Saturday uh, to get the win. Um, I haven't really seen the comments, I've just had general feedback um, that he seems really animated, that uh, you know, he said that I don't deserve it and stuff like this. So, um, I haven't really decided to put it forward to that because you know, I'm boxing Saturday and that's the most important thing. We really want to be back with the bank, you know, uh, want to be back there. And, I've got a great show, and it will be a great show. And um, it's great to, you know, be so involved with Salad and, and they've, anyone who's been to any of the shows in Germany know that it's a real event. You know, they've got stellar cards with, with fantastic events, and, and they are for the fans. You know, and that's what I wanted to bring here to the UK. You know, we've certainly seen some fantastic shows here in the UK over the last few years, but we want to you know, up the bar and deliver as much as we can. Uh, for the boxing public, and uh, so, so certainly Saturday's far more important than anything uh, Darrell has to say right now. Um, the most important bit of news regarding Darrell is that once I win this fight, we have confirmation that my next fight will be against him. D Darrell's statement that he's boxing a bump, well he's world champion of the WBC, Chap said two, two, two places down from his and three places down is, uh, is number three in the world ranking. So, you know, maybe you should uh, drink some coffee, turn on the internet, and have a look. You know? um, I've got history with the Darrell family. You know? um, the, 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 sorry, the crap that they, that, they, that they talk about coming over to Britain and getting robbed against Frosch. Frosch was a close fight, right? You always get a little bit, a bit of a nod when you go to a hometown fight. Everyone knows that, right? But it was a close fight. I saw what happened in Detroit with Abraham versus Durrell. And it still makes my blood boil to this day. So, we'll deal with that when it comes to it. I know you're not, obviously not looking at, like, looking into that fight yet with this one on Saturday, but he's having it. Oh, well, I'm already looking at it because it's, it's, it, it's going to be Saturday night, we're going to do a job. And on, on Monday morning, I'll be another fight. He's adding that he won't come here. Yeah, we can, we can talk what he wants, you know. I'm in a, in a place where we, we've got money, we've got the talent, we've got the fans, we've got the market. I, went, I put on Abraham Durrell, sold it out in Palm Springs. It was then cancelled due to a back injury. Three weeks later, Palm Springs, by the way, is an average temperature of 35 degrees. Was back injury four weeks later, three, four weeks later, we were in Detroit, minus 10 degrees, right? And a book of Joe Lewis Arena, 20,000 capacity, was sitting there with 1,500 giveaways, right? So we'll see what we do with the fire. He hasn't got anywhere else to go in terms of making money either. Is that how, how you would see it? Well, it's business. You know, they want to come up with a big offer. You know, I'm sure George doesn't have a problem with traveling. We'll make sure that the fire's got the right officials. You know, I've got a problem with traveling. So we're not going to be dictators. Very simple. Huh? Do you already have in your mind where you might want to put them on? Um, well, you know, my dream's big. 
Must have been next door. No, uh, it, 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 it's, you know, joking aside, it's it's a, it's a big fight, you know. Uh, but you know, I'm very reluctant to sit in next. I've got a bit of a superstitious man. I'll talk in a minute one on ones about the next fight, but he's got he's got a serious challenge here on Saturday night, you know. And both guys know what's at stake, you know. And I think it's very disrespectful of Darrell to talk, call them world number three of oh, his of his federation where he is world champion to say the number three is a bump. You know? But that says a lot about Anthony Durrell, you know? So let's uh, start the banter on the Durrell Saturday night around midnight. The, the letter that from the WBC, is that given a time frame for when the manager has to happen? No, there's a, there's a, apparently, there's a loose agreement that they're allowed a voluntary until November. Now we're in September, so I don't see a voluntary schedule. Um, as I said, we'll be pushing, I don't, I don't really see where you can go, you know, I mean, you know, we're the fight, you know, it's all about, you know, I think in my interview with, uh, with Kuhn Cassius, he, he said he was talking about cash, well, you know, cash is king in this business, but George is cash, you know, so, you know, it's not, as I said, I don't want to go ahead of myself, we've got a very tough fight on Saturday night, and George is, George is, you know, in a vicious frame of mind, so it's going to be, it's going to be good. Any others before we have our two fighters stand up for some uh, pictures? Okay, well I want to remind everybody once again. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean I'm flying out from the fight, so we're tight up the fight. We've got the ball in the past and we kept in, in contact and uh, you know, I, I, I wish him the very best, you know. Obviously he's boxed it on my promoter show and I think I think he would obviously say he's got it he's got it all to do. You know, he's um, but it's his, his chance and his opportunity to fight for a world title. So uh, you know, I'll be at my lawyer we split that night, obviously I want Britain to win, but I also want the things out of back to win. Um, if Paul does win, then obviously um, he's fulfilled a, a, a dream, I suppose, of winning a world title. But also he's certainly thrown himself in the mix of some huge fights here in the UK, you know, um, other Brits that not going to world titles or, or world champions already. So uh, you know, I wish him the best of luck. I think it's a clever move from Gala to uh, um, bring Abraham back to the uh, UK eyes next weekend and uh, get him up, him up with some big fights here in the UK. And, you know, even that wins. Well, we've got our group plan, but uh, you know, I want to achieve as much as I possibly can. Obviously, that includes fighting the best fighters and picking up as many belts as I can as well. So, who knows? We could have a big unification next year. Uh, there's plenty of great fights out there for me right now. Um, but we've, we've chosen our path with the most suited path and uh, it's like Saturday night first. Yeah. Can I also just ask, has Christopher got another a job, a day job, or is it just 100% full-time boxing? No, Christopher, is that you have another job? Or is it 100% Boxer professional, sans autre métier du tout. Non, je suis 100% un boxeur professionnel. Absolument. Non, no autre job. Il est 100% professionnel boxeur. Il n'est pas un Fighter. Yeah, he's 100% fighter, the European. Uh, super middleweight champion. I think that's his full-time job. Are you, Carlo, are you a full-time boxer? He also fights journalists, so I'll be careful. Yes. Yeah. 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 You can line up right now if you wish. The last guy, the guy who came up to fight James Gale, who was also the European champion, had two jobs. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's like different. Yeah. yeah. We don't. We don't have the fighting yeah. postman here. Or anything. I mean, I must. I must say one thing about the European belt. You know, and. Um, you know, people, you know, who put fighting or job issues or who I think back me up on the other European title, um, I think a big compliment to the British board is, is that the British belt is the domestic belt, the only domestic belt which carries a value. If I look at Germany, I mean I don't know how many 
German, I don't even know who the German champions are, right? Denmark, I don't know, is actually a Danish champion? So, you know, and it's a, it's a really traditional belt. The same for the European belt, right? There's, there's a couple of other versions floating about, which we've been guilty of using as well. Um, but the European belt is the European belt. And it's, it's, a, it's a rankings which I look at and I understand, which uh, <coughs> isn't always the case. Um, and then you've got the WBC, you know, where he's number three. So, it's, uh, it, it's, you know, everyone's here for a reason, yeah? oh, I'm using, yeah. I'm using it especially now. <laughs> um, but it's, uh, to fight that, I think both guys have, have heard, you know, um, and, and I say that, you know, I think it shows the respect that the WBC has for, for Jordan. They see what, what he's done in the last two fights, not just in terms of how much, you know, pay-per-views or tickets he sold, but in terms of performances, you know, hats off Carl, Carl Watt, you know, a punch from the gods, you know, uh, I've seen him promoted Carl enough to, to, to see, you know, what Carl can do, that, that punch came from to the boxing gods for the Wembley Arches, you know, um, but, but read between the look, at the, look at the rounds, you know, it was a, it was a very balanced affair, and, and the first fight, of course, uh, not so bad, it's almost, um, so, you know, uh, George belongs, you know, he's, uh, he's you know, 26 years old, he's, a, he's one of the most exciting young fighters on the planet, you know? End of Okay, well let me remind everybody once again, the weigh-in tomorrow is at 1pm? Uh, 1pm. 1pm, the official weigh-in. Uh, I think it's obvious to anyone looking at both of these fighters right now, they're not a couple of light heavyweights uh, walking around trying to uh, drain themselves down to 168. They both look like they could weigh in right now at the 168 pound limit. They're in great shape and that, that's a tribute to uh, fighters that keep themselves in shape all year round and I think that's what we have here. So uh, Saturday night at uh, SSE uh, Arena Wembley, the EBU, the European Championship of the World in the super middleweight division, also on the line, the vacant, the prestigious vacant WBC Silver Super Middleweight Championship, and it's a World Championship title eliminator. A lot is on the line. So tomorrow night, the defending EBU champion, ladies and gentlemen, once again, let me present to you and give him his due for being here and coming to uh, the UK to defend his title. Uh, the European Super Middleweight Champion, Lisberg. Did I do better that time, Michelle? Have you? Okay, très bien. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, Christophe Rebrasse. <laughs> and his challenger from Hammersmith, London, of course, the, uh, the puncher that we all are happy to see back in the ring again right here in London. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for the St. St. George Grove. We're going to get out of the way right now and have the two fighters stand up here face to face for uh, press.